There is a substantial risk of loss associated with trading forex, binary options, stocks, or equities, collectively, asset classes. Only risk capital should be used for trading. Trading in any asset classes is not appropriate for everyone. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. No representation is being made that investors will make profits or will not sustain losses. Before trading in any asset classes, investors should consult with their professional broker, financial advisor, or financial consultant to determine whether trading asset classes is appropriate. Investors who trade in any asset classes should only do so if the capital used for this purpose represents funds that an investor can afford to lose without adversely impacting the investor's lifestyle. No trading strategy or methodology is without risk of loss. No trading strategy is risk-free and no trading strategy can guarantee profits or freedom from losses. Investors risk losing the cost to execute any transaction, including associated commissions or fees. You should carefully consider whether trading in any asset class is appropriate for you in light of your investment experience and financial resources. Any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility and at your own risk. None of the statements or materials in the Ovoria Prime chat rooms constitute a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell. Software Strategy Session. My name is Steve Vetteral. I try to act in a capacity as your risk manager. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the broadcast. I know that the broadcasts that I have are typically, I say bear with me, typically after 10 a.m. on Saturday. This is Eastern Time. Uh, it is also uh, try to do them on Tuesdays right after 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And that always can't be the case. So, <clears throat> but I must tell you, we are we are rolling through some some weird times and you know this will be probably a little bit of shorter uh <clears throat> discussion today because I always gives you guys time to go back and listen to the last couple of weeks the key really to any of these presentations or really listening to anybody you know just pretend none of us are your gurus right that's key um and then if you could just take a couple of nuggets away that's what's important so looking at next week as far as forex factory um, <laughs> you know, I don't know that anything other than inflation related data, right? So a lot of these PMIs and anything, obviously it has to do with CPI or PPI, even month over month or year over year, are really going to be the only things that are focused on maybe outside of what's going on. And is the prime minister of the UK, right? So, you know, the focus in the UK, uh, obviously there. And inflation, right? The focus uh, in the most of Western Europe is the ridiculous energy prices, the war, and all other kinds of inflationary measures, right? So here in the U.S., inflation <clears throat> and lots of dire forecasts that haven't come true, right? It's almost as I had mentioned, I think on Tuesday and Saturday as well, that we're in a holding pattern, right? So picture yourself in an aircraft trying to land running out of fuel and uh the tower still got you circling right that's kind of where we are so when we're in periods of time like this um i'll always go back and reflect upon trades that i've executed that have gone really well right and you know obviously if you go into telegram i have a whole bunch of stuff up there i actually think i've even I forget if I've given access. It's been a couple of years since I put this. There's actually a really good book out there called Candlestick Charting. Um, and he, I'm pretty sure that I've put links to it. I'm not going to dig through it right now, but it's actually a really good piece. That's something that I'll go back to or some of the chart patterns that I've put up there and go back and start looking, right? When things are in a holding pattern, maybe there isn't that great of an opportunity. Who knows? It could be totally wrong and there could be fantastic opportunities next week. Um, I had a chance this past week to take a look at, um, and it seems like a lot of the um, algos that we have have been running pretty good. So I actually have a meeting next week with Desan, who is the variable. As many of you may know, we both live in Orlando. We've go out for drinks here and there and collaborate on all kinds of trading systems and how to get it done. Uh, so I'll be able to report to you maybe with more updates because I always like an outsider's opinion of what's going on in the marketplace and offerings and so forth um, and products from, you know, somebody that does this for a living, right? <clears throat> so 
Um, let's talk a little about the news. So Monday is the 24th, and we have, you know, basically an absolute rash of purchase. I don't know that this stuff's really going to matter, quite frankly. Um, consumer price index, certainly anything that is CPI based. In this case, it looks like it's uh, Q over Q. It's quarter over quarter, not month over month. Pay attention to that because, you know, the importance of the, we like to call the down under countries is, you know, many of these are pin action off of what's going on in not only mainland Asia, um, but also the entire area over there because they, they <clears throat> do a lot of business with um, mainland Asia for a lot of things just beyond natural resources. <clears throat> Also, the Penfold Winery is one of the best in the world, in my opinion. Uh, but in any case, so this will be interesting that the Bank of Canada, will they break from, you know, the rest of the world? And I'm just setting that out to just wake you all up because you're like, wait, somebody's pivoting? No, I doubt they will. I would imagine they just go along with everybody else to keep raising rates. Uh, be interesting what they say, you know. It's almost like these guys live and follow in the shadow of the Fed, you know. <clears throat> but who knows? They could stand on their own. The ECB press conference. Now uh, this should be an interesting one as well. You know, as I always say, in front of all these red folder events, and you're looking at them uh, from the standpoint of an East Coast eastern time zone so always make sure you adjust these to whatever your time zone is and don't be trading in front of news right now um do note that next weekend is daylight savings time shift so from a risk standpoint i always take a look when i you know the u.s comes typically a week after this and the following week in november um but it's spring ahead fall back Okay, so you lose an hour, but more importantly, I always want to make sure with my trading systems um, and all of the clocks I have, not necessarily in the house or our office or whatever, but the that everything is adjusted correctly and it does not affect any of the algorithms that I have running. So make sure you check on that. Um, I would imagine as I know a lot of the communication of Voria has shifted to um, I should say shifted away from Telegram <clears throat> and into other means. There's less discussion going on um, on Telegram. So just be aware of that. It's really pretty much all I want to say on news. I don't really have a lot to add in the markets either. You know, we're in a holding pattern as far as the S&P goes. You're looking at a daily chart right now. Holding pattern, I think that you know, we had a lower low here on higher volume, as I talked about, that we'd more than likely see the other side of the range. But now the range is probably somewhere in the area if you look at just the index as a whole. So it's the range I think we're going to be contained. It's about 3807. Then obviously that flash bottom, which is basically 3500, right? This is the, the floor for now. Um, I think the biggest surprise to the marketplace would be a rip to the upside. But if we got past this 3,800 area, which is like the end, I'm pretty sure we're going to rip all the way to 39. Now, if we do get to this point, one has to ask themselves, okay, let's go to a week of chart to finish the explanation. Always like to take the full scale if you guys haven't figured it out. So now we've made it, and it's not as easy to see in this chart. That's why a lot of times I'll jump between weeklies and dailies as far as long term technical analysis goes. So we're holding on the big moving average, right? So far in terms of long term. 
So the, the true bears would say, well, until we've broken the 200 day on the weekly chart, we're not in a bear market, right? So we're just in a correction of a bull market, right? And as I always say, from a risk standpoint, never ever have those knuckleheads <laughs> uh, rule your life because the vast majority of those talking heads on television and certainly radio, podcasts, YouTube, wherever you're listening to your, your local guru, who should not be your guru, right? Um, just note that the vast majority of these people, they all have some sort of book that they need to protect, right? And a lot of them will just go out there and talk their book while behind the scenes they're doing the opposite, right? So risk management 101, I have a core group set of rules that are about 10 different rules. And one of the main ones is <clears throat> don't fall in love with any particular um, so-called expert um, take them all at face value and be biased, right? Or just have that watchful eye. You will be in a much better position to profit and be of less risk orientation. If you can uh, get yourself to do that, so to speak. Okay. So long term, obviously this 3,500 truly edge of the cliff. Do keep in mind that this wasn't that long ago that we ripped out of this area. See this right here? So, again, these are week charts. Each candle represents a single week. Green up, red down, right? But I always want to look to see, and this, this can apply to any. This could be the Euro US dollar chart, right? Um, you want to look to see that we've continually broke from a pretty solid base you know ideally you'd want to see a cup with handle some other formation pattern that shows exhaustion and that all sellers are out of the market or at least most right hence buyers can continue to come in and you have a what i like to call a significantly less chance or put a different way you have a continual or i guess i should say you have a much greater percentage that this breakout will not fail, right? <clears throat> it's like the Troy Apollo commercials, you know, where he's the head and shoulders, never not working, <laughs> never not failing, right? <clears throat> so the key really to that is that is it a solid pattern that it broke out from? Now, those that bought here, okay? And by those, I mean, basically institutional investors, the other time frame, the OTF players I talk about, right? This is their first defense of this area in over a year. I don't know if you guys can see this right here. So we broke from it. So it should be no surprise that at least the first shot down, a chunk of them stepped in to defend this. This area breaks. I would imagine we're going to the bottom of this whole area which by the way was another strong breakout at 3,200. <clears throat> so regardless of what chart you look at, those are the types of things that you usually wanna look at from the standpoint of, does this breakout have teeth? Does it have legs? Can it continue in its current form? Will it fail, right? Those patterns repeat themselves. And you know, it's funny because it, it seems to me that some of the, greenest if you will traders out there which isn't necessarily a bad thing but they can't seem to agree with the following statement the market is ambiguous and you have to be able to deal with ambiguity and make judgment calls based on x right whatever x is right so hopefully x is some sort of well thought out region right? Where there's tons of confluence, there's a whole bunch of stuff lining up. And, you know, the more stuff that lines up in that area, the more chances are something's going to stop and reverse at that area or continue uh, or to bounce off of before pulling back against it, right? And these can apply to any chart. Um, and again, all measures of risk, right? So if you are comfortable with the percentages, um, and in many cases, I talk a lot about a couple of handle, but a couple of handle could be on a breakdown side as well. Uh, the key is, is that it was a, was it a solid pattern put in on a 
you know, well traded or uh, extremely high volume oriented, good solid data instrument, right? So I use the S and P or the ES as an example because uh, it is one of the most liquid in the world um, and has good data. But you know, currencies can be the same way. You know, they can offer the same types. But really, the key is it just um, once you become comfortable with the percentages. Um, and it's about 72, 70, it depends on the market, but 72 or 73% um, that a cup of handle breakout will <clears throat> be a good one. <clears throat> then you can trade big. So understanding the metrics, stats, data, whatever you wish to call a compilation of X, um, the more comfortable you are with taking on larger risk, right? It's kind of like what's the old adage in Vegas, you know, when you're when you're rolling in it, just, you know, split the cards and double down and, you know, until your luck changes. Right. If your luck changes, pull back and trade light. You know, I've talked a lot in a lot of my older videos up on YouTube, which <clears throat> all seem pretty aged. Right. Some of them are seven, eight years old. Uh, but nothing's changed, you know, just trade the exact same way. Yeah, all the content and all those videos I put up there, nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is the price of the market, right? We may use different looking tools, right? But we're still measuring fibs, moving averages, right? Whether you're using some smaller time frame or a daily chart to look at a higher time frame, none of that's changed right yes there's different types of indicators some better than others as far as support and resistance levels i like to the one i have is uh, exceptionally well uh, it was custom written by dasan i think it's a great piece um, but at the same time um you know a lot of the newer traders they um you know they're constantly looking for the holy grail you know I could tell you there's probably four or five organizations on this planet that have figured out the Holy Grail. And one, they're not talking about it. Two, guys in the group that founded these organizations are all billionaires, right? And they're not granting interviews. So <laughs> what, what the Holy Grail that they figured out is, which most of us have a hunch of how they make their money, these groups, um, got to go build your own. Right. Um, but at least in Algo land, you're looking at probably about four to five million in coding costs um, just to get the right stuff going. Now, I can tell you this. It's going to be a lot of people listening. going, oh, man, I genuinely hope I'm wrong. I really do. There's going to be some developer. I would imagine we've already got a number of great ones at Avoria, but there's going to be a group of developers just absolutely got it nailed. Right. Um, the key really isn't with most of the algos that I've seen out there making money. Most of them have high win rates and all that, but their risk management system can absolutely be tested a few times a year. So like I said, it's a stair step up, elevator down, right? And that's the difficulty with this whole game, you know, and I really do want you to understand the odds that are against all of us when it comes to this stuff. And honestly, I pray <laughs> that the statement I just made is false. I pray that somebody comes out um, and actually has something that just freaking kills it, right? As long as you put it with a different broker, it's not going to be booked the hell out of your ass once they figure out you're killing it in that futures or Forex account or equity account for that matter. Um, happens a lot more in forex land right because you can't you can't trade against this type of strategy in regulars you know everybody's market makers they provide liquidity blah 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 uh, i get it but you know <clears throat> they can't bolt against you that that's the only risk from a internal core structural issue that i have with forex if they could figure out a way for all these make up the number 16 18 big banks that run most of these currencies if they could figure out a way to centralize this on one exchange i think it'd be a total game changer don't know that it's going to happen why 
because they're all making way too much money on these trades to centralize this exchange and regulate it. Not in the sense that everything's being looked at too much, you know, and God forbid the European Union ever be one to do this. I would just run. Uh, but some autonomous independent exchange, right? They could be publicly traded. That's fine. You know, um, I think if you take a good core look at NASDAQ or the NYSE or any of the other executions out there like ARCA, um, these guys all do a great job. The cool is, I should say the cool thing is, especially from the standpoint of somebody that has unfortunately a futures tinge talking to you every week, um, is that, you know, that stuff just can't be effed with right? You can't screw with it. The CME has checks and balances and, you know, they're all owned by um, a bunch of different organizations, but I mean, they have the ability to aggregate solid quality data and you're not worried about, you know, somebody's pulling a rug on you on some sort of data. You know, it seems like I talk about this too much, but if you guys are going to trade in size, this is absolutely something that's going to need to be worked out. I always hear these numbers. Well, you know, I did, I got a million bucks inside a, a Forex account, right? But nobody will ever show me the account, right? I can't see the performance. Oh, well, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll put it on FX and I'll put, you know, so I'm always suspect, right? And again, hey, you know, <laughs> I think this would be great if I'm proven wrong. I really do. Um, but I'm just, I'm a skeptic, right? Steve, you, know, you seem to talk a lot about this. Why are you concerned with this? Because here's the deal. We find something that good, I could easily put a few million bucks in it like that of client money, right? So selfishly, you know, I'm in this gig to find a great program that can handle large institutional money without the head traders sucking 50% of the profits off for me, right? That's not something I'd been ever engaged in. I don't care how great the damn thing is, right? So that's what I want. So if somebody has found that, okay, and it truly has downside protection and they can demonstrate this long track record, send me an email. <clears throat> it's easy. It's just svetteral at avoriaprime.com. Everybody knows it. Anyway, off my selfish and shameless promotion here, back to talking about the markets. Let's go to the DXY. Let's go back to daily here. So we are still. So one one fifteen eh, at the high, one ten, still a four dollar range here. I don't really see that changing anytime soon. Even if Boris Johnson gets back in power, which would be absolutely crazy, you know, you know, and it really is sad because. <laughs> Many people often joke, especially the elitist globally, right? Most of these folks are in Europe. <clears throat> Most of them are of a, uh, a fairly crazy tinge without getting into politics. You kind of, you kind of all know what I'm talking about. They always talk negative about the U.S., right? And <clears throat> I always would teach my kids that, you know, jealousy knows no bounds, right? Those that are jealous will always hammer on those they're jealous of, right? So we're already suspect at first that the ones that rip on us the most don't like us, right? Because it's a jealousy thing. Look, I'm not trying to be, you know, some sort of patriot on this call. I, I just think it's it's funny when, and, and again, there's, there's some risk involved in this discussion as always, but um, anybody that continually says, well, you know, we're the superior country, right? You hear this a lot in the UK. Um, yet everybody else looks at their their whole political system and they laugh. It's a mess, right? They have some of the highest inflation out there, you know? And hey, look, it, it, it's, it's probably not constructive for me out there, you know, continuing to throw paint on the situation, right? But, <laughs> you know, 
Well, we, all our countries all got problems, but I just find it amazing that if you're like a really wealthy person, um, one of the houses that you own is going to be in the U.S., and that's where you probably spend a chunk of your time. Isn't that crazy? So we move on <clears throat> from my bias here, right? <clears throat> I, I just, I think that if one's ability to continually see the hypocrisy and stuff, you're already on high alert, right? I point this out a ton to my kids. I want them to know, you know, if if most people that had narcissistic problems, I'm shouting out to the vast majority of uh, younger women on Instagram, if they knew how little people actually cared about them, they'd spend a lot less time on that shit, right? <clears throat> well, you know, they need something to do. They're having fun. No, nah, no. Nah. It, it's, it's turning a lot of young women into basket cases. And I don't think it's constructive, right? There's risk in that, right? Risk of that inner monkey in your brain going nuts, right? So I say, just understand most people, you know, and I don't know if I've ever shown you guys this. This is actually the single best blog I've ever written as I get off topic here. The guy's name is Ed Lattimore. And let me do you guys a favor. This is it right here. This has garnered just an absolute mountain of interest. Probably as good as Atomic Habits stuff, if you're familiar with, which I'm a huge fan of James Clear um, and a lot of that stuff because it just puts it into context. But this isn't to be, you know, this is about you understanding your own role in the world, right? And some of the best people out there they understand this stuff just intrinsically, right? And it's not like, you know, you, you look at the title of the blog, you're like, hey, wait a minute, nobody cares about it. Not true. There are people out there that care about you, I promise you, but the list is small, right? They're interested in you, they may love you, but they don't really care what's going on in your life, right? Unless it's just human nature, right? <clears throat> and and the, really the key to this is you know it's not malicious like he says here, and uh, and I you know honestly if there's really anybody that in my opinion they should make a movie about his life it should be Ed Lattimore. I mean somebody really should option a movie in Hollywood about this guy has had just an absolutely ridiculous childhood um, through his teens and he overcame. I mean, just insurmountable odds. As, and he is, you know, now a, a speaker on the circuit that truly came from the hood and has street cred. He's an Xboxer as well, but, <clears throat> right? Where is the line? I think that's so important to understand here. where the part is but <clears throat> the key thing in this whole article really is you know you think i've shown this so much i've actually shown this to clients friends colleagues I remember in an interview, he was summing this up and it basically said, just understand what the particular person that, and let's say it's your boss, right? Right. Your boss doesn't give a shit about you, right? He, he cares about what value you can bring to the table to make his life easier or her life. Right. So the core of that, and again, <laughs> this is absolutely rooted in risk management. If you want to decrease the risk of you losing your job, find out what those things are and make it happen if it's possible, right? As long as it's on a professional nature, right? The key is, is what value do you bring to the table to make their job easier? 
This is one of the things I heard Led talk, or Ed talk about in an interview. And so the, if you put that and you just take this over into a marketplace discussion, right? Um, market doesn't care about you, right? The market's typical role um, is to take all your money, right? It might sound terrible. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important to understand that it's not a vicious or malicious, right? It's just part of the, the game that you're playing in, right? Think of one of those Roman gladiator games. You know, the deck was completely stacked against you, uh, but yet you could pull out if you had, you know, build and navigate getting killed. <laughs> um, there was a way out, right? And it's not as brutal in the marketplace, but if you look at it, it should probably be my new analogy. If you look at it like a gladiator in the ring battle, you get to be much more prepared, right? Nobody cares about you, this and that, right? Sounds really terrible, but I think it'll put a nice hard shell on you. Um, and that is beautiful tool to fight off risk. That's all I got to say about that. So See, I wasn't kidding when I said sometimes on Saturdays I have a long diatribe and I get quite tangential to prove a point, which could take 20 minutes, right? But I think the stories are good. So let's go into the Euro. Euro US dollar daily chart. Tight range continuing to play out. Um, a lot of times you have a settling out period, if you will, after a lot of volatility. Very tight range. Some wildness, obviously related to the whole prime minister thing and different roles coming out. Um, and irregardless of your political take, right or left, one thing you never ever want to do in an inflationary period of time or any type of rough patch, if you will, is raise taxes. You don't even want a whiff that you're going to raise taxes. You don't even want the marketplace getting a sniff that you're thinking about raising taxes. It is completely counterconstructive to a recovery. That's all I'm going to say on that. <clears throat> Moving. Dollar CAD, still tight range. Yen. Look at this spinner day. It's crazy. I don't know what happened. Take it down to one hour. Oof. It's one of those coming to Jesus trades. See this, you guys? Hmm. I wonder if I just missed whatever the hell kind of news went, went on in Japan on Friday. It was a hell of a move. Gotta take a closer look at this. I think I'm kind of coming in this chart kind of green this morning. Hmm. Stay tuned on that one. Back to daily. Swiss. Aussie US. And we're looking for craziness, right? Like we just saw with the dollar yen. By the way, this is what you call Q clearing trades. So it looks like to me, not necessarily on this chart, but certainly on the yen dollar, um, they cleared both sides of the Q. Any orders that were sitting up or down, it just went wham, bammy, and then go and ripped up the other side. <clears throat> trades will get you. It's one of the things that um, in the early days, I, I took a lot of heat. <laughs> Among other, I don't know, gurus at the time. Um, this was back in the, I don't know, 2013, 14. <clears throat> you know, all these emerging futures guys were starting to hit the financial media. Hey, I'm great. You know, join my room, all this stuff. Um, and I would say to the people, you know, looking to join the room, they some would always ask me, hey, you know, should I join this guy's room? And I'd be like, yeah, just, just ask them what their policy is on stops, right? Um, and at that point, to a certain degree, you don't really want to be a sitting duck, right? If you're, and you have like 
a 10 futures contract position on, right? This is not something you'll mess around with a couple of contracts, but if you have a larger trade size on and, you know, things are just kind of dead, you can bet your bottom dollar that all of the, you know, way too much money, way too little skilled traders out there, and at least in the ES market at the time, um, they're putting stops everywhere, right? And then occasionally, when so many stops would build up either higher or lower than current price, <clears throat> you'd get what's called a Q clearing event. Um, and that's where the market makers auction it down, start hitting the bids, and then they lift it again. They start raising the offer. The market's just going up and down across the entire ladder, right? Just remember, as you guys may have seen some of these videos, I use <clears throat> uh, what's called a trading technologies price ladder to trade the futures markets. It's a, a dynamic tool um, that was developed by <clears throat> trading technologies and many of the domes that you see out there. Um, they have to pay a licensing royalty to trading technologies who develop this. So I don't use a static dome. I use a dynamic one, meaning that price always stays in the middle of the dome. Price moves up or down automatically depending on it. It's a very, very, very great way to constantly know what's going on, especially if you layer order flow on top of that, right? And I mean, I almost look at like a, a magnifying glass into your soul of what's going on in the marketplace and <clears throat> you can't do that in currencies so it's another issue i have but you could have seen that if you'd gone into the ladder uh that there was just trades just pockets of them sitting way up high and it doesn't really necessarily matter what instrument this is um this is just a it's almost like a phenomenon in this that don't be that sitting duck along with however many other people that are just up there waiting to be picked off right and you know in those days i didn't trade uh i didn't trade futures with any stops or anything like that i didn't want to be part of the queue now if you're in you know a really volatile environment obviously there's a very stupid idea and don't do that obviously but you know during these these calm periods of time you know market's not moving around too much you know i didn't keep these trades on that long so it wasn't like i was a sitting duck all day right um, now you can continually move profit targets, you know, if you're going short, which I specialized in, in the early days of taking shorts, cause I, it was much more, uh, of a self-fulfilling prophecy because stair step up, elevator down was definitely the way back then. Um, and it certainly is to a, a degree today, but you know, I just never wanted to be caught in the, in the, in the group. Right. <clears throat> There's a commercial on TV. It's a Geico commercial. There's a bunch of kids that, you know, aren't paying attention to what's going on, and they're trying to get away from this mass murderer dude, and they wind up sitting in his chainsaw shed, <laughs> right? So <laughs> maybe that's a bad analogy. I was looking for some Halloween analogy, um, but you know, don't don't be caught on. Don't be caught out there. That's all I'm saying. So. <clears throat> You know, if you're taking a bunch of the trade off and it's really moving in your favor and you want to set some, you know, some stops up there as, as to protect your runners, as I call it, you know, that's fine. Um, I'm just saying with, you know, large positions is, you know, if things are, are calm, you, you have an action to see the, the ladder, especially in the futures markets, you know, don't be caught, <clears throat> don't be caught getting uh, crucified out there. All right. So Euro, Yen. Q clearing events in that one. Euro GBP. Euro AUD. Just kind of roll through this. All right, so here's a GBP CAD. Let me take a look at the weekly on this. Maybe the month that we broke. Yeah, it's interesting. We're right back at long term support resistance we're at it also at the lowest point of the moving average so notice we had that and keep in mind this is you know obviously all these charts look like this with this whack day because of what happened to the british pound during that let's just call it instability period of a day Daily chart at the same time frame. 
A lot of noise on this chart, though. If you want to see this exogenistic move, you can see it here. But, um, you know, I, I you know, <laughs> the funny thing has happened is this happened in the uh, U.S. futures markets. They call it the flash crash day. Uh, and the low, I remember watching television that day. I was actually trading the markets for part of the morning. Uh, I had a really young children at the time. And the somebody was on television, some trader analysis student. I think one of those like CNBC fast money trader guys was on. He's some sort of futures guy. And he said, yeah, we're, we'll, we'll never see the bottom of that again. Yeah, we actually saw the bottom of that in 2018. So as I always joke, we're, we're going back down to visit that area to complete the auction, right? That's typically the theory. It's proven right nah, well over 90% of the time last 100 years in auctioning. Um, question is when? That's we don't know the answer to. In this case, it took a couple of years. We came down and visited the same area. It can happen. Pound franc, pound yen. A tough trade for that Aussie CAD. And ZD, we love it. GPP, NZD. Gold. Tempting a rally. Back up against what I find to be a strong resistance point. Oil, hopefully continuing to fall. And then our favorite, crypto, hanging on by a thread. Look at these really tight range days. Can't even see the candles. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. I'll stretch it out for you. I mean, it's like Doji City. Look at this. I mean, I had, to, I had to move this way out to see what the hell's going on. We're going to break from this. I would think the path of least resistance is up from this pattern. But this is a bearish pattern historically. This is a great example of everybody not collectively in one room, right? Maybe they are in their, their thought processes. And one guy among a million saying, you first. <laughs> and with that, we'll bid everybody a great week. Thank you, as always, for having me as your risk manager. Let's continue to spread the word for those for looking for the occasional Saturday morning droning on. I am happy to be the captain of that ship. I wish you all a great week. May the trades be with you. Thank you.